In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie a simple yet decorative candle holder. Ok, so let's start with the basics. What is this candle holder and what do we need to make it? Now, the candle holder is essentially a Turk's head knot. More specifically, it is a three-part Turk's head shaped in a shape of a cup that enables you to place a candle at the top. Before we actually start tying, let's talk about the rope. The rope used is a quarter inch rope and you can either use hemp or cotton depending on your preference. The length of the rope that you're going to need really depends on the diameter of the candle that you use. So, first you need to know the diameter of the candle before you can actually calculate the length of the rope that you're going to need. As an example, this is an inch and a half wide candle. And for this candle holder, I used six and a half feet of rope. If you have a thinner candle, you're going to need less rope. If you have a thicker candle, use more rope. Now, the second thing that we need to mention is this. This is where we're going to tie our Turk's head knot. It is a mandrel, essentially a PVC pipe, onto which I placed a rubber band. The diameter of this PVC pipe needs to be larger or at least the same as the candle that you're going to use in your candle holder. So we're going to tie our knot here, then tighten it in a shape of a cup, and that will create our candle holder. One thing that I would recommend using inside your candle holder is a glass container that will prevent your wax from spilling out at the bottom, and also it provides some fire safety, so your house won't burn down the first time you use it. As far as the rope goes, you're going to need to prepare your rope. You can either tape up your ends using some tape, or you can use a common whipping in order to secure the ends and prevent them from unraveling and fraying. Once you've done that, you can also use some wax and wax your rope and that will make it more smooth and easier to work with. This is completely optional, but with natural ropes such as hemp, this is sometimes quite a good idea. So with that said, let's move on to tying. I've got some freshly prepared hemp rope here. I waxed it and whipped the ends. This is about six and a half feet of rope. And I have a PVC pipe here that's about an inch and a half in diameter. I'm going to place one of the ends under the rubber band. And this creates the standing end. We're now going to wrap around our mandrel and come over the standing end, wrap around again, then pick up your other end and go under your standing end. We now have three pieces of rope here at the top and I'm going to pick up my left one so the working end and I'm going to pass over my middle cord and go under my right one like this
we again have three pieces of rope at the top and I'm now going to pick up the left one and place it over the middle one. Like this. Then I'm going to again pick up my working end. So the right one. And I'm going to go over, then under towards the left side. Now, pick up your working end and place it next to your standing end, following it, so we are going to go over, under, towards the right side. With this we have tied one pass of our Turk's head knot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow our standing end with our working end and effectively double and then triple our knot. So take your end and simply follow your first pass. One quick tip, if your knot is quite tight before you are starting to double it, you can pull in a small part of your working end and then redistribute it through the entire knot, making it a bit more loose, which will make your doubling and tripling a bit easier. So I would definitely recommend doing this before you start doubling your knot. And we can now continue doubling it. And since we have worked in a lot of slack, doubling is going to be very easy. You can see that I reached my standing end and at this point we are going to continue and add the third pass to our Turk's head knot and with that we are going to run out of rope. Once you have tripled your knot, the working end and standing end will meet under the same part. All of the parts of the knot are tripled, so basically they have three passes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to shape this knot 
into a cup shape. To do that, move your knot onto the end of your PVC pipe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this part a bit more in order to close it. And the left part is going to stay open for the candle. To tighten it, pull in your standing end or working end a bit in order to hide it under this end and then start working out your slack. As you can see, I have retightened my candle holder. If we remove it from the PVC pipe, we can see that the standing end or one of the ends is hidden under this part here. The other one is a bit long since I've pulled the slack through the entire knot and pulled it out this end. So now you can cut this end and your candle holder is complete. Now I left my candle holder a bit loose since I plan to work in that glass container. Like this. Now you can re-tighten your knot after you have placed your glass container inside to tighten it a bit more, but I don't think it's needed. It fits in quite nicely. So now you would cut your end and that's it. You can do some stitching on the ends if you want to further secure them, but these candle holders are not prone to unraveling. Now the last and probably the most fun part is to place your candle inside your candle holder and start using it. So guys, thank you for joining me in this fairly simple tutorial and see you next time.